Welcome to Fishes Presents Feeding Vinegar Eels. At my food station in my fish room, I have coffee filters. These are the round coffee filters and usually quite large. So I cut them down and I just trim them off an inch around, all the way around, several at a time uh, as they come in the pack. They fit really nice in a funnel, a 99 cent store special. And I can push it right down into the funnel and now I'm set for filtering out some vinegar eels. Here's my culture. It is, of course, uh, mostly at the top, all the vinegar eels in the water column, water vinegar. At the bottom, you see just apple decaying. That is the food source from the bacteria. Organic vinegar, 50% water, 50%. And a couple slices of apple with a little starter, a pinch, or a little bit of vinegar eels and you're set for a few months later having a full dose. I'm now pulling out with a turkey baster two or three times through the filter. Um, this is usually enough for my needs um, depending on the age of the fry of course. Now I'm going to let it drain but what drains out sometimes has the eels still in it. I don't throw that liquid away. You need it. And so it must be filtered right back into the culture to maintain enough volume. And it doesn't matter how many times you feed the vinegar eels. It seems as though they rebound very quickly. The more you take out, the more they reproduce. So it's amazing how much you can actually feed and you can feed more than I show here. This is for demonstration purposes in, depending on the age of the fry. So now I just cautiously try to make sure most of the liquid is out. I don't wish to put in the vinegar solution into the fry tank if I can help it. But there's always going to be some residual so there's not much you can do about that. But water changes will take that out. If you saw my previous video on trickle water changes in fry tanks. If you haven't seen that, please go back and see. Take a look. Now, here's my fry tank. Uh, I'm going to disperse. Now you know why the cone type of filter is not so good because I'm going to, with the face down, the side where most of the eels will have been caught, I'm going to put that down and shake vigorously throughout the tank. I try to get to the back. I try to get to the front and disperse them because the fry are all over the tank so I want them all to be able to catch some. Now some of the eels are still caught up in the filter. I believe that many of them are going to wiggle out and get into the tank. Let's take a look at what happens uh, in the tank now. The fry are busily eating on anything they find in the java moss, also the water column. So you see them darting about but you don't see the eels, or do you? They're so small, they can be easily seen with the naked eye, but my camera is not able to pick them up very well. So one technique I've used is with the eye, look through the water column and with a black background. So how do I get something in a black background or dark background to see if there's vinegar eels ab swimming about? The filter, sponge or even better the black part of the heater works very good to see the particles. What it looks like just a lot of sediment floating about in the water column is actually what I just introduced into the water because the water was crystal clear before that. The fish are now eating those vinegar eels and their stomachs are getting quite full. You may notice that in these two-week-old Odessa fry, their stomachs are bulging. They're just bulging. But they're not yellow like you would see if you were feeding baby brine shrimp, but they're still getting plenty of food, and that's the, the difference. In this particular scene, it's a little zoomed in, so you might see all those little moving about, but it's still kind of hard to see them through the camera. Because the camera wants to focus on the heater, the camera wants to focus on the glass, so it's very difficult to capture on film. Maybe one day I'll have a better camera. 
don't know if you were able to see in there, but let's take a look in the Java Moss. Um, there's fry milling about, picking away at different things they find. Now, once they've discovered the eels swimming up and down in the water, they will stay in the water column for a good number of hours. And that's another great reason to feed vinegar eels when they're very young and newly hatched or when their yolk sacs have recently um, been used up. But right in the dark spots of this Java moss, take a good look. I'm going to crop it in and show you exactly where I'm talking. Right there, I see the vinegar eels moving. There's some wiggling effect. Well, don't know if you caught that, but it's, it's something that is not too easy. So there you have it. A nice easy way to feed live food for your fish. The easy way to take vinegar eels out of the solution or culture and to put them into your tank by simply shaking a coffee filter. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's meant to be educational and helpful to those others also breeding fry. Please like and subscribe and check out my other videos.